Uh, good morning, everyone. It's uh, just about not morning here. It's 20 minutes after 11. Uh, <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting around. We've got a little bit to do today. I've got uh, go see my daughter Elizabeth. We're going to go visit with her a little bit. My daughter Rebecca is uh, lives here with us. Her and her son and husband they live upstairs. I got an apartment upstairs. And this old house we got, we lucked into, uh, got an apartment upstairs. And uh, it's quiet right now. Everyone is gone. <laughs> so I had, I had a little time. And uh, I was thinking uh, about my family and, and what we believe. I don't know about my, my two sons. I got, I got a son in, in uh, North Carolina. And I've got a son in Kansas City. But <clears throat> I'm not sure, you know, what they all believe. I know that uh, one of them doesn't believe that, that uh, uh, God is sovereign and all. Uh, in fact, I think he leans more toward the Buddhist. But either way, you know, it's... Uh, it's tough not knowing exactly what your kids believe. Uh, sometimes you're talking to them, they'll, they'll give you a look like, well, you know, uh, that's fine, Dad. Uh, that kind of look, you know. And uh, so we don't know if they're in the body of Christ or not. I, I don't know. I know. I know my daughter is. Elizabeth, I know she is. Rebecca, I know she is. But... You know, you wonder about your kids and your grandkids. What's the, what's going to happen with them if we're snatched out? Um, I've always wondered that. But I do know that our God, our Heavenly Father, loves our children more than we do. Uh, and that gives you, that's a little, that's, that's a little uh, consolation. You know, He loves them more than we do. And when we're snatched out of here, uh, I believe we have the ability to come back and help them through the the coming trials on this earth because there's a lot going to happen. You know, there's a lot going to, going to happen. So when they ask you what you believe, you know, 1 Corinthians uh, 15 tells us uh, verses 3 and 4, uh, For I give over to you among the first what I also I accepted, that Christ died for our sins, according to Scripture. Uh, he was the... Uh, uh, Sacrificial, sacrificial lamb for us, you know the 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 lamb without any blemish out here on the ground. You know the the Israelites would would uh, slaughter or crucify every year uh, as an offering for their sins, and they had to do it. I don't know how many times, at least at least once a year. I've heard as much as four times a year. I'm not sure, but the blood didn't work, you know, for the lamb, for the sheep. Uh, but Jesus Christ, you know, our Savior, He come for the sins of the world, the whole world. Uh, so, so there's that. But uh, so that He was, He died according to Scripture for our sins, which is finished. He done that, and He was entombed. Uh, he was entombed means that He was dead. There was no life in Him. Dead, dead is dead. The dead don't know anything, nothing. And that he has been roused the third day, according to Scripture. Uh, and that's the neat part, being roused, raised from the dead, from among the dead. He was the first fruits of those being raised uh, from among the dead, being vivified. Christ was the first fruit, and we are the, the ones that's going to be uh, left in his presence when he comes back, that we'll be vivified along with him, along with the, the dead in Christ. Uh, Romans 6, 4 says, We then were entombed together with him through baptism into death. You know, we don't do water baptism. That was for uh, saying you're going to be a follower of Jesus. And uh, so we're, we're not following Jesus. Jesus r ruled here on the earth, and he came for the Israelites. Only for the lost sheep of Israel is all he came for. Um, but... Uh, Romans 6, 4, We then were entombed together with him through baptism into death, 
that even as Christ was raised from among the dead through the glory of the Father, thus we also should be walking in newness of life. You know, we've got this, uh, we've not been born again. We're not a born again. That's for Israel. That's for Israel only to be uh, rejuvenated. Uh, that's for Israel. Second uh, Thessalonians 1.10 says, uh, Whenever he may be coming to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at all who believe, seeing that our testimony to you was believed in that day. Uh, see, we all should be changed in a twinkling of an eye uh, when he be coming back to be glorified in his saints. In 1 Corinthians 50, 15, 51, says, Lo, a secret to you I am I telling. We all, indeed, shall be put to repose, yet we all shall be changed in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For he will be trumpeting, and the dead will be roused incorruptible, and we shall be changed. You know, our body will be changed uh, from mortal to immortality. We will be vivified. Uh, in Christ when that happens. And that's not something that uh, Israel looks forward to. They look forward to ruling here on earth. And that's what their, their realm is going to be here. For our realm, according to Philippians 3.20, our realm is inherent in the heavens, out of which we are awaiting a Savior also, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transfigure the body of our humiliation to conform it to the body of his glory. In accord with the operation which enables him even to subject all to himself. Who will transfigure the body of our humiliation. A transformation taking place. Uh, to conform it to the body of his glory. You know, Christ's body uh, was revealed to Paul or to Saul the, uh, before he became Paul and rode to Damascus. And that was a glorified body. That was a glorified Christ. Um, Paul didn't know him. When he walked on the earth, he didn't know him. He only met him as a glorified Christ because he had a message for only for us. You know, uh, that's why through Paul's letter, he said um, he called it his gospel. This is my gospel, according to my gospel, you know, so which was given to him, not by man, but by the spirit, by by the, the risen Christ. Give him that revelation for us today. Um <clears throat> Uh, Colossians 3, 1 through 4 says, If then you are roused together with Christ, be seeking that which is above where Christ is, is sitting at the right hand of God. We, we, we don't wrestle with uh, flesh and blood, but with the spiritual, right? Be disposed to that which is above, not to that on the earth, for you died and your life is hid together with Christ in God. Whenever Christ, our life, we're our body Christ, whenever Christ, our life, should be manifested, that means to be, uh, to be seen, then you also shall be manifested together with him in glory. In glory. That means we'll have a, the body of Christ, be glorified bodies, right? And if 2 Thessalonians 1, 12, so the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. How awesome is that to be, to have all that, uh, to look forward to, you know, the, the things that we got. So anyway, <clears throat> I put this all together and, and there's uh, just these, these little bit of scriptures. And when I read them together without any interruption, just read it as it is, uh, it sounds, <laughs> it comes out really neat. Uh, for I give over to you among the first what also I accepted, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was entombed, and that he has been roused the third day according to the scriptures. We then were entombed together with him through baptism into death, that even as Christ was roused from among the dead through the glory of the Father, thus also we should be walking in the newness of life. Lo, a secret to you I am telling. We all, indeed, shall not be put to repose, yet we all shall be changed in an instant, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. 
for he will be trumpeting and the dead will be roused incorruptible and we shall be changed whenever he may be coming to be glorified in his saints and to be marveled at, at in all who believe seeing that our testimony to you was believed in that day yet god being rich in mercy because of his vast love with which he loves us we also being dead to the offenses and the lust vivifies us together in christ in grace are you being saved and rouses us together and seats us together among the celestials in christ jesus for our realm is inherent in the heavens out of which we are awaiting a savior also the lord jesus christ who will transfigure the body of our humiliation to conform it to the body of his glory in accord with the operation which enables him even to subject all to himself if then you are roused together with christ be seeking that which is above where christ is sitting at the right hand of god be disposed to that which is above not to that on the earth for you died and your life is hid together with christ in god Whenever Christ, our life, should be manifested, then also you shall be manifested together with him in glory, so that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, in accord with the grace of our God and the Lord Jesus Christ. <laughs> that, uh, that pretty much sums it up, right? That sums it up. But Anyway, this is Friday. Uh, Friday afternoon, 11.30, uh, right on the money right now. So uh, I got some stuff I got to get done, but there's a little something for the day. Hey, you guys have a fantastic day. I'll talk to you later. See ya.